Mr. Walton, did you make contact with Alien? Will you take him to another planet, to a mothership? How do they communicate with them? Can you tell me what they look like? Can you tell me how many of them there were? Were you, were you given food? But the teachers are alive. They're not books. They are the very living essences of nature itself. What a strange person. Unbelievably powerful supercomputer that's running our reality, and we don't have a clue yep. as to how to operate it. So when maybe you or somebody else creates an AGI system, and you get to ask her one question, what would that question be? What's outside the simulation? Say in your mind, say to yourself, I am more than my physical body because I am more than physical matter. I can perceive that which is greater than the physical world. Broadcasting from New York, upstate near the Great Lakes, it's Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Roof. We're live Tuesday night, January the 6th. Well, it's the 5th on end of the 6th. It's the 6th, dang it. And uh, it's cold. But we're going to be talking all about the human potential. We're going to tap into that again tonight. I want to thank uh, everybody for listening and coming out every night. God, it's good to have you. And Night Stalker and Dan for coming out last night as we predicted our 2021 predictions this is your first time listening to this show, uh, we're all about consciousness and the weird and the strange, but we also like to talk about truth, but mainly conscious exploration and human potential. It is a live broadcast, and uh, you can call in at one 800 335 It's unscreened calls. We'd have it, wouldn't have it any other way. Um, if you want to support the show, you can go to our Patreon. Go to lightingthevoid.com. Click on the banners there, the Patreon banner, or the support buttons. Buy stuff. We sold some altar boxes, by the way. I can't wait to see what those things look like when people are actually using them. I want a whole bunch of pictures of those, too. And we're sending out videos for those as well. Um, I really do appreciate you guys, though, like calling in last night. That was cool. And Pacho didn't make it in, our producer. Like, he tried to get in, but he didn't, so I talked to him today. And um, he has his predictions, but I want to, you know, I was going to say it, but I think I'll let him call in when he gets ready to tell his predictions by the way, I want to do this the kind of running thing before we start the broadcast here tonight. Um, we have a speak pipe button on the new website. I got to get the contact page up. But if you call 501 777 and you leave a voicemail, you tell me what your 2021 prediction is. We'll play it over the air. Some, someone's bound to be right. I mean, the UFO thing, I think I'm going to be right about that. Like I said about last night, because they're about to do this whole disclosure thing with the Senate and all, but we'll see about that, right? So anyways, uh, tonight I wanted to talk about your potential as a human being when it comes to psychic abilities, because a lot of us, we think that, you know, that you have to be a special person to be a psychic. Now, I don't necessarily believe that. I think it's a, um, 
I think it is a level of consciousness that you reach when you start understanding that the that life is speaking to you in symbolism. However, there are people that are super talented at it, and I meet new people every day that are just really good at it when it comes to divination, when it comes to psychism, clairvoyance. Um, it's really starting to pick up. Either that, or I'm just starting to be around more people that can do it. But the real question is, is can anyone be psychic? Now, in this truth-seeking community, we have a lot of folks that are asking the same questions that we've been asking for 10 years or more to the same people that have been lying to us for 10 years or more, talking about the same things. To get down to the truth, though, I think, I still believe, it all comes down to conscious exploration. You have to know the facts. You have to use reason. You have to do your own research. You have to use your own brain, right? That's most, like, don't take anybody's word for anything. But stop asking questions to the people and begging for truth from people that ain't going to give it to you. These systems that are in control, it's obvious now they're not. I believe, and this is in my wholeheartedness, that I believe this, that we're being called to tap into our own potential and abilities to think for ourselves and do for ourselves. So, can anyone even be psychic? I believe you can. I think and on some level that, I mean, uh, I think on some level I'm psychic. Maybe not as good as our guest that's coming up, uh, Robert Milne, who's a pretty renowned psychic, or Mary. But I am starting to understand when things speak to me, whether it's through my dreams, whether it's a flash intuitive vision that I have, you know, the voices that we hear, whatever. Because there is a unified field of consciousness. I just... I can't prove it, but I believe it. And I think that we all can tap into it. So when we open up our own, like when you open up your mind, especially when it comes to gaining understanding of other people, what happens? Like, seriously, I, I'm not sure if it's uh, psychism or if it's something that we just haven't tapped into yet. Because when you can really like stop just thinking for a second, get out of your own way and really try to just open up your mind to things. All kinds of crazy stuff happens, right? We can look into the future. I don't know how many of you talk to me about the premonitions that you have, but does it mean that we can change it? I wonder because we can look into the future. I don't know. I'll tell you something that's happened to me here recently is I've been keeping a pretty adamant dream journal. And I'd have just like weird dreams that, you know, like everybody has weird dreams, but mine would be particularly weird. Like, you know, things that just didn't make sense. Now I know that there's something, I don't know what it is. Some people say it's your higher self, your holy guardian angel, the, the super consciousness, God, whatever. I don't know what to call it. But I know that there is something that speaks to us in symbolism and dreams, and it's important that we write them down. I also know that things happen in our life in synchronicity. Like, to me, it's all connected. If you can pick up on this, then why can't you just, why don't you believe just for a second that you might actually have the same abilities as some of the most like renowned psychics on the planet. I, I think the only reason why they're so good at what they do is because they don't doubt it. Or maybe they do, right? We're, we're going to find out. Maybe they do doubt it, but they practice it enough until they get good. For instance, I always found it fascinating when Mary comes on the show and she starts reading people. She doesn't hesitate. Like there's no, um, uh, and I, I'm not saying there's a right way to do it. But the way she goes about it when there's just no doubt it always amazes me. And how many people always feed back into the broadcast and tell us how spot on she was. Have you ever tried that, though? Like, really, just have somebody tell you something, they ask you for advice, or they want to know something, and just start going with what's in your head. Usually that's not very good, right? To start speaking without thinking, you know. But if you can get past the doubt about yourself, 
the doubt about what the person thinks about you, the doubt about your potential, just doubt altogether, image, all of it, and just start speaking what comes through. I bet you most of us would find that we're probably a lot more accurate than we think. We're probably a lot more connected than we realize. I don't know how true it is. It's just something like, it's a theory. This is my theory. And so, if we can do that, then we can look into the future, then we can change the future. So many people are talking like everything is set in stone. The government, what they're going to do to us, the new world order. I mean, like, we're talking, we've been talking about the same stuff, bloodlines. We're spinning circles talking about the same conspiracies, yet they're the biggest conspiracy, this vaccination thing. It's happening right under our nose. So how much talking and saying, oh, I'm a truth seeker, I want truth, I demand it, how much of that is really doing anything, right? I don't, it's not. We have to develop our conscious abilities. And I know you guys think I'm crazy, but all you have to do is have one, one, out-of-body experience that's real. I'm not talking about, you know, you're not sure if it's a dream or whatever. I'm talking about local out-of-body experience where you become a ghost. When you become a ghost, does it really matter if they're telling you the truth or not or if you trust them or not? You can go see for yourself. I really think we're being asked to develop these abilities. To me, whoever you are, wherever you're listening from, you're a magician. You're creating your own reality. You're tapped in. It, it, I think it's just a matter of how aware of what you're tapped into, like what's being spoken to you and shown to you. How aware are you? Like, you know, when people talk about getting downloads, I've had that happen. But sometimes you start thinking like everything is speaking to you, and then you start to get psychosis. I've seen these guys do it with Gematria, too, you know, like they start making numbers out of everything. But you know what? I think there's a fine line between <laughs> it's kind of crazy because once they start waking up to it, they see the construct, right? And then it's almost like the mind starts looking for it, and then you kind of tip a little bit, and you get out of reality. So there's some kind of weird, thin line right there, I think. I know some of you know what I'm talking about especially if you study numerology or your mantra or anything like that. There is definitely a construct here. We're definitely connected. It's just this energy thing I think we've got to figure out. And self-belief. So, like, as we move into this age of Aquarius, I think it's time that each and every one of us express ourselves individually, all the while working together as a community of individuals, you know, I'm watching these people, all these uh, Zoom things that are happening on YouTube. There's uh, some pretty cool conversations that are happening. And everybody's really expressing their self, their truth, and what they think and what they're worried about, their fears, their wants, their, de their desires, their deep yearning for the truth. But at that one point, it's like, to me, this is just to me, we get to that point, we're like, yeah, man, it's terrible. They don't tell us the truth, and we know they're lying to us, and we want the truth, and da da da, right? And we know it. And then when we realize we can't do anything about that, then we start getting upset at the people that don't know it. Well, wake up! Don't you see they're not telling you the truth? And and then you, you know, you spend all your energy waking everybody up, which that's good. It's really good. But then what do you do after that? What's next? Well, you know, you come together. You be practical about it. You start trying to find ways to get out of the system. Then what? Do you really want to fix the world or fix yourself or both? I guess what I'm saying is I'm not trying to preach at you. It's my theory that in order to do that, we need to tap into the human potential as far as metaphysical things go. We know our limits in the physical realm. Matter of fact, time's playing tricks on us right now. I know there's a uh, there's a call for a negative, uh, what is it, a negative leap second? I don't know if you, you heard about this, but 
they're saying that the earth is starting to spin just a little bit faster than it used to. It's spinning faster and faster. I don't have any clue how they calculate this down to the leap second, but the atomic clocks accurately record how long every day is at a millisecond. And we even look at this show when we do this radio show, we look at it like at a millisecond. So what I'm saying is, is in physicality, We've got scientists and all these experts are saying, oh, we need to change the clocks down to a millisecond. But it's not, we can do that. But what is it changing in the world? We can talk about all the physical things that suck, that ain't right, that should be right. We're, in my opinion, that's, that's great. That's how you become aware. But at what point do we start tapping into the human potential as far as what else we can do? Because I think that's, the answer. Yeah, Kronos, the god of time, he's kicking us back a millisecond. So, like, I think it's like since mid 2020, the Earth's been as accelerated and it's now on average like 0 0.5 milliseconds a day shorter than 24 hours. It's not exactly 24 hours. So, the world's timekeepers, whoever the hell they are, I don't know who these people are, they're now debating whether to delete a second from time to account for the change and bring the precise passing of time back into line with the rotation of the earth. That's awesome. Do it. And then what? You see what I mean? Like, there's so much conspiracy talk out now. We know there's bloodlines, right? We know there's bad people. We know people don't care about us as far as big money goes. We know they're shoving, like, pills down our throat, poison down our throat. They're doing all kinds of bad stuff to us. At what point are we going to do something about it? You know, before Art Bell died, he talked about the quickening and stuff, and, like, he wasn't playing. But I think the reason why he started this whole late-night stuff that we're doing now and talked to people about it is because he believed, just like a lot of you believe, that there is some type of underlying potential that we can do other than try to, you know, fix the world through the means of getting it, it, it's it's counterproductive is what I'm saying. It's redundant. How do you fix things when all the information that you're getting is from people that lie to you? So you depend on that information to figure out what's right or wrong to go back and try to fix it. It's a crazy circle. And then everybody gets up in arms and talks about it and yells about it. But the real people I think that are making a difference are the people that speak about these things that get really precise about facts that make you see alternate perspectives and show you that you're being lied to in ways that just blow your mind, but also the people out there that are trying to get you to tap into your metaphysical potential when it comes to what we call magic, which is the science we haven't figured out yet. That's what, I mean, it could just be the brain. We just don't know. We just call it magic because we haven't figured it out yet. Uh, how we're all connected through psychism, through conscious exploration, through the dream world, how people are literally getting out of their body and affecting the physical realm, that's a real thing. That's the paranormal activity most people are talking about. We go down that road and we can actually start fixing things. I don't know. Like... <clears throat> It's pretty bad for a broadcaster to get on here and, and start thinking, well, you know, I could talk to you about all the cool stuff that's going on, the UFO disclosure, because the Senate wants it. And do you really think that these people that have, do I even have to ask this question? Do you expect to get the whole truth and nothing but the truth and then use that information to base on what you're going to talk about tomorrow? Do you trust them? Or... Could you actually work on your psychic abilities, your conscious expl uh, explorative abilities? That's probably not, that's not a real word. Or become a ghost and go into one of these conference rooms while these bastards are talking and listen to what they're really saying. I think the key to this utopia that everybody wants isn't depending on the new world order and vaccinating yourself. I'm not going to go down that road, but 
there's the celebrity that got the second vaccine. I don't know if y'all heard about that, but they're making such a big deal out of it. It's crazy. The big change is going to come when people can really see that they have this other energetic body, this other makeup that they need to be developing. The reason why we keep coming here, waking up as a baby, not knowing why the hell we're here, doing it all over again until we finally realize, okay, I'm supposed to be doing something here. What the hell am I supposed to do? And the whole time when you become an adult, like I think probably from the age of 12 on up, your soul is pulling at you, trying to tell you what you need to do. But everything else affects you, right? The world, your family, friends, school, the news, fads, all kinds of stuff gets in your way. And by the time you get middle age, you have a middle life, midlife crisis, which I could be going through right now, I don't know. But you have a midlife crisis and you start saying, the hell with all that. Like, this is what my heart's telling me to do. I've learned my lesson. I'm going to go express myself this way. Then all the synchronicities and all these things happen to you and you choose to listen or you don't. Or like James Salcedo was talking about earlier, like he just, he's writing. I'm not saying you got to do it for a living, but every one of you that listen to this show should be expressing yourself in some kind of way. If you want to write, we have a place for you at the fringe. We, we have like some guidelines, but come write with us, you know. This, we built this thing for a community. It wasn't to make radio rock stars, not really, even though we got a few. It was so we can have like-minded people come together and really figure this stuff out and really do something. Fringe.fm, actually. So I think where we start, and everybody's had these in their life, synchronicities, deja vu dreams, weird, crazy stuff that they'll talk about with their friends and just say, oh, well, that was kind of crazy. They don't know that they have this other body, this other makeup that's trying to wake them up. And there's a like a Gnostic verse about it, I think. And one of the old, uh, it's like one of the oldest books about uh, something about fish, right? <laughs> I'm going to butcher this thing, right? But there's something about how uh, Jesus or whatever the fisherman gathered all these fish and he you know, he took the big ones and threw the little ones back. That's what that's essentially what we're doing here. Do you remember when we read the the red book and Carl Jung talked about how he kept going back into this like water of consciousness? Because that's what this is, man. We're in living waters. We're little bitty little bitty mini creator gods in this living water. And until we grow these super energetic conscious bodies that we're supposed to do, these our stellar bodies, then we just get thrown back. Like little tadpoles. We throw them back until we get big enough and we grow up, not the flesh grow up, but we grow this other thing that this womb of earth is trying to get us to grow. That's my wild and crazy theory. But we have all these principalities, powers, man, politics, corporations, uh, you know, peer pressure, style, fad, culture, and some of that stuff's cool, but it's running our lives and it's kind of keeping us to say what that's what's most important even all this weird while all this weird stuff's happening you have all this stuff tugging at you to do something to do what you're here to do we're like i was thinking about this the other day too um if you ever busted like one of those little spider sacks those little spider eggs and all the little speedy spiders go running out just everywhere right? That's basically what we are. This is just like a super hyper, way more advanced egg full of billions of little spiders that need to grow. We're not really spiders, but need to grow this conscious body in order for us to launch off of these lead dense planets into starlight and go, you know, like into this bigger realm that we just don't know exists yet. But until we develop here, we're just going to keep getting recirculated. It has nothing to do with figuring out half of the stuff people are complaining about out there. Although, 
while I'm here, I do understand it. I want to be free. But it's not as hard as you think to be free. It's really not. You just don't buy into the BS. I don't know if I should say incriminate myself, but half of all the stuff they scare you about, I've tested it. It's not. It's just a scare, man. Like if you got COVID, you need to stay home or whatever. But if you don't, there's not really much they can do. And if you don't want to be contact traced, don't take your damn phone. It's that simple. Go travel across the country. Live your life, people. I just don't want to stop doing what we started here at LTV. That's all. So we're going to talk to uh, Robert Milne about can anyone be psychic? I want to hear his story. He's got a really cool story. Um, his website is rlmreadju.com. And uh, we're going to be speaking with him because he's got a cool story about how he woke up to his uh, abilities too. And uh, maybe we'll learn something. Maybe we'll see if my theory is bogus or whatever. But I think I'm close. I'm, I'm on to something. We'll be right back. More Lighting the Void coming up. Stay with us. Hey, Fringe FM listeners. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or no Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the Fringe FM by calling 701-719-3971. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 701-719-3971. That's 701-719-3971. Listen to the Fringe FM on any phone, anytime, anywhere ancientlifeoil.com that's ancientlifeoil.com are you stressed i mean who is it anxiety creeping in no not that is sleep hard to attain because your brain just won't slow down we're living in crazy times and the fear knob has been turned up okay there's an answer take a big breath exhale and go log on to ancientlifeoil.com CBD, broad and full spectrum, organic and non-GMO CBD for you to enjoy. Change your tune from fear to calm, from brain overload to clear thinking. 0.003 THC on full spectrum and 0% THC on broad spectrum. Competitive pricing with the best quality. Also know everything is going to get better. No worries, be happy. CBD can help calm so your nerves don't think they're a six-string electric guitar. Enjoy life, smile, and log on to ancientlifeoil.com for great CBD. That's ancientlifeoil.com. You'll be glad you did. Want to know what's on the Fringe FM? Check out our schedule at thefringe.fm. Hola, Fringe listeners. This is Dave Cruz of Beyond the Strange, and you're listening to The Fringe FM. This is Malorca's 45, fan of The Fridge FM, challenging everyone to open their mind's eye. Listen to Lighting the Void with Joe Roop to gain precision for your third eye vision. My name is Jake. I'm from Billings, Montana, and I am a Void Walker. Hey, Joe Roop. Thanks for Lighting the Void. This is Janine in the bluegrass of Kentucky, and I am a Void Walker. What's up, guys? This is Damien from San Marcos, Texas, and I'm a Void Walker. I listen to the show to keep myself aligned with the world. Hi, this is Laura, a.k.a. Laura Lavender. I'm from Las Vegas, and I listen to Lighting the Void because it helps me understand some of the strangest experiences I've had. So thanks for all that you do and for always being there for us, Joe. Belgium and you're listening to Lighting the Void with Joe Roop. Hey, this is country music singer and void walker Jason Benoit. And when I need my fix on the world of magic and the capabilities of the human consciousness, I listen to Joe Roop right here on Lighting the Void Radio. out of the alchemical tradition of Paracelsus is a medical tradition called Spideria. 
Though not many people practice this work today, Phoenix Aurelius has been researching and teaching this work for the last 15 years, and he needs your support. Hi, I'm Phoenix Aurelius, and I'm the founder of the Phoenix Aurelius Research Society, where I perform modern scientific research on the methods and techniques of Paracelsian alchemy and spagyria for health, wellness, agriculture, ecology, and more. All my work is 100% funded by the public, so if you like what I'm doing and you want to support my research, please consider making a purchase of spagyric medicines from my apothecary, fund your own spagyric IDF wellness research, or participate in my group study or one-on-one -on -one immersion courses so that you can learn how to perform this work for yourself. I want to thank you in advance for your support. Visit thefringe.fm forward slash alchemy research and enter coupon code fringe and receive 15% off anything and everything on the website. That's thefringe.fm forward slash alchemy research. And thank you for doing your part and keeping alchemy alive in the modern day. All right, welcome back to Lighting the Void. Thanks for joining us here. I'm Joe Roop. Thanks for staying with us over the break. Our guest coming up, Robert Lindsay Milne, probably the most experienced psychic uh, as far as how many readings that have ever happened, I mean, that he's ever done. Let me just tell you a little bit about him, and then we'll let him tell his story, because all of the questions that I asked before he's here, I think we got the guy to talk to about this. So here's the thing. Robert Lindsay Milne was reading tea leaves before he could do English, and the Toronto native had humble beginnings as the 19-year-old hippie psychic working at a tea house, but he has since grew to be recognized across the continent as one of the most insightful psychic intuitive counselors of his time, and he has traveled the world giving insight with the psychic intuitive sessions to tens of thousands of people. And uh, you can go to his website at rlmreadsyou.com dot com thank you for coming on lighting the void it's a real pleasure to have you here i'm really excited about tonight i've been looking forward to it and uh we're gonna have a great time yeah i'm looking forward to this too because i got like these questions i think i think we're in this age where people are really starting to kind of wake up and say hey man th th this isn't woo woo right like there's there's something yes. going on here as far as this unified field of consciousness goes synchronicities dream symbolism uh, intuitions on fire. Uh, some people, you know, there are more people are practicing manifestation, magic, etc. You name it. You, on the other hand, you've got a pretty fascinating story. And how long have you been doing this again, as far as psychic readings go? I, on January seventeenth, uh, I celebrate fifty-six years of being a professional psychic. Wow! I was uh, fifteen and a half years old when when I started to work at a tea room uh, doing tea leaves at, in, in Toronto. And that is how I got off the streets um, going to work at the tea room. Uh, before that, I uh, before applying there, um, uh, I, I, I uh, was homeless. And, and that's how I got off the street. That's uh, that's a really cool. That's cool. Actually. Now, 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 <laughs> I was doing readings or or, or being psychic um, uh, when 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 I as long as I can remember, uh, you know, I, I I saw things and did things at at four and five and six years old that that um, uh, got me into a lot of trouble because uh, I, I I didn't realize that I was seeing things or sensing things that other people weren't. So, mm -hmm. so I would, you know, Uncle Harold, that wasn't Aunt Sally. Who, who was that woman? You know, like uh, that got me hit. Um, so one time I was about five or six years old. I had, I had just come home from lunch, school for lunch. And, and I said to my mother, Grandma Harris died today. Um, Grandma Harris, by the way, actually was my great grandmother. And this would have been in 1954, 1955. And Grandma Harris lived in London, England. Um, I'd only seen her once. And all of a sudden, from out of the blue, I say, you know, Grandma Harris died today. My mother got very, very upset, yelled, scolded me, and said, stop saying those terrible things. Wow. The next night at dinner, because, you know, uh, news traveled slowly in those days. The next night at dinner, 
my mother and father were talking and my mother said, Grandma Harris died yesterday. No. And I thought my dad was going to get angry and scold my mother for saying bad things. And to my astonishment, they just started talking about it. And that was very confusing for me for, for several years. Yeah, I bet. I mean, not only that, you were being kind of like shamed for it too. That's kind of, well, that's kind of, uh, different, right? Where you're being shamed for well, like what you yes. naturally can do, you know? That, that, that's right. Now, um, in my everyday life, even as a kid, I would, I, you know, I would, I would see some of my friends in, in trouble and I would, I would, you know, you know, give them information and, and on, uh, two or three different occasions, um, throughout my short academic career, I, I, I completed grade eight, by the way. Um, often I would, I would, um, go to a teacher and say something to them. I'd see them upset or having a problem. And I would, talk about that issue with them as say a, a 10 year old or 11 year old could understand. And often the teachers would come back and ask me other questions about what I'd said to them. Um, so, so that has been something that I've done instinctively, naturally, um, for, for as long as I can remember. Tea leaves though. That's what really Yeah, I never out, read. Huh? Oh, okay. So we have to talk about that <laughs> because, because, um, in Canada, right now, now this is really, uh, this is not the truth. Um, it was illegal to do psychic things in Canada, and it only became legal in uh, on July the 1st, 2018. What? No, I, no really, man. It, and and it, it, it was called the um, Witchcraft Act, and it was Section 3. 326 of the Canadian Criminal Code. Now, this was written uh, in, in the late 1800s, but it was on it was in the, the law um, uh, until 2018. And, and there were four sections. And in those days, everything psychic, everything, anything other than what would Christianity, uh, every, everything else was was um, fraudulent uh, immoral or evil. So this is where it was coming from. So here's, here's the way it would, it started. Um, it would say any, um, any, every, anyone who fraudulently a tells fortunes for a consideration, um, B, um, section or se section two, uh, to use an occult or crafty science to heal or give guidance to someone. Um, section three, it says um, anyone who uses an occult or crafty science to accuse someone of a crime is guilty by summary conviction um, and not more than a five thousand dollar fine and more than or and in and, and one year in jail. And that that ended in yeah. twenty eighteen. 2018, two our, our prime, yeah, two, yeah, two, yeah. And by the way, um, our, our prime minister Justin Trudeau, um, his father uh, was was also a, a, a great prime minister of, of Canada. So Justin legalized marijuana and fortune telling, um, and and his father um, decriminalized um, uh, homosexuality, and they were both that. That's the, some of the things they were both famous for. Well. And that's kind and of crazy. So too. you got all this like progression that's happening, you know, yeah. evolving. And then, but you're still, you're still considered still a do. witch, right? That you should yeah, get yeah, fined. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, ne I personally never got arrested. I never got busted. Um, and, and, but, but I always, I was always okay with that law because, because one of the things that it, 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 um, did was it give, gave, um, law enforcement, um, an easy way to um, um, to flesh out um, fraudulent or uh, frauds, uh, scam artists. Okay. Now, when I say frauds, they're the people that deliberately set someone up uh, to rip them off for you, you know a lot of money. Yeah, like the, you know there are some pretty crafty people that tell uh, psychics. That's stuff right. And, and, but look, they're not. I've psychics. had a lot of psychics on the show too, so yeah. I I kind of know the difference. I haven't had too many people that I would think. Are, are fraudulent but like but here's the thing you and me agree on that here's the thing i think everybody can do this it's just the matter of how much they're blocking themselves you know 
from being able to do this. I, that's just I, my theory, though. Well, I, I, well, I, I, I've been doing this all my life, um, and and I'm telling you, your 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 theory is correct. Um, being psychic and being spiritual are different. Mm. So you can be psychic and not spiritual. It's most people that are spiritual are psychic or or are intuitive. So um, being psychic is is a natural instinct that mammals have so so we don't not not just humans but but most mammals have this instinct and it's an intuition so we all have it so so have you ever been somewhere and you look up and there's someone just looking at you or have you ever been somewhere and you notice someone in the crowd and you started to look at them and then they looked right at you yeah well that's being psychic yeah, I see what you're saying. That's yeah. being, see, so that's that's connecting. Well, that's where it starts. Now, just about every human. Now, there are some that don't. Now, and so if we took every human and put them, um, uh, uh, you know, shoulder to shoulder, lined them up. At one end of the line, there's going to be one person that's absolutely zero percent psychic, and then at the other end of the line, the, the, there's another person that's absolutely one hundred percent totally psychic, and then everybody else fits in between. So, just about everybody has that intuition. And all you have to do is listen to it. And it talks to us all the time. And, and it's, it's what we have. So, so what I do when I'm teaching people to be psychic is I tell them, become aware of what's obvious. Just, just look at the person, become aware of what's obvious, and then more becomes obvious again. And just continue with that. That's, so, so everybody has that ability. I've taken it and, and evolved it to um, my life's work. And I've taken that ability and focused it in a specific area. And, and um, I, I've also grown spiritually o o over my lifetime. So, so I've combined the two. And, and so it's like a talent, a muscle, an awareness. Um, and and it's, it's, like, it's like taking an average body and, and, and becoming a bodybuilder. So yeah. I've taken that talent and, and 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 turned it that way. And anybody can do it if they want to work hard at it. You know, you know what gets me, I think, with people, the sometimes people ask me for readings or tarot readings and stuff like that. That's fine. You know, but uh, the second I want to start talking to them, I start worrying about, and you can maybe help us on this, I start worrying about, well, are they going to think I'm judging them? Are they going to think, I, I'll start worrying about what they think that I think, if that makes any Joe, sense, you know, Joe, and that blocks so, you, right? Well, okay. Um, what, what, what's going on right now is, is that you are thinking you're being analytical, right? So you're using a different part of your brain. When mm. we're being intuitive, we're using a different part of our brain. Is so this the so, uh, right hemisphere, left hemisphere kind of thing. Um, it's 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 well, it's 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 um, uh, brainstem, middle brain, uh, or lower brain, middle brain, upper brain. Um, so so that that's um, the the way it could be measured. And okay. the analytical brain is the upper brain, and and that's what you you know gives us the ability to be detailed, analytical, um, and it's the um, middle brain that, that, and, and, and lower brain that gives us the, our, our instincts and our intuitions. So when you're being analytical, you're not in touch with your intuitions very much, two different parts of the brain. That's one stumbling block. Yeah. So you're blocking it right away just by analyzing. Well, yeah. Well, you're, you're just focusing in a different direction. That, right. that, that's all. You're just using a different part of your brain and you can get back to that. Um, so you'll have to forgive me. I, I'm, I'm forgetting where we, now that I did that side, side step, what was the other thing that you, that we were talking about at the beginning before this? Well, it was um, mainly, it was mainly like how people block themselves from it. That ah, was it, you know, oh, oh, do they block okay. themselves? Does everybody have it? And they just block themselves because they start thinking and like you say, analyze. Well, well that's, 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 uh, no, number one. Um, and, uh, well, that, that's a very big one. So, so that will hold us back. Um, <laughs> I forget where I was going with that thought, man. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's, it's okay. It's, sorry. So, so like I get that way too, though. I start, uh, analyzing stuff to death and here's what's weird. You get an intuitive hit about something 
Yes. And then the second you start analyzing it, you can go somewhere way off. And then you're like, man, I'm not even making any sense. You oh, know? I remember now. This was this is this is what I wanted to talk with you about. And this is really, really important. You said this is like really important uh, way to look at something. Um, you, you said, you know, people ask you for to do readings and tarot readings. And, yeah. stuff, and, and, and you said, well, I, you, uh, Joe, am afraid that I'll be judging them or, 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 They're gonna or something think I'm like that. They're going to think I'm judging them. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Well, you have. See? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, now, now no, you, you have, but you see, judgment well in our society right now judgment is oh you're a jerk or you're bad or that you're negative that's judgment yeah. well that's that's well that's only part of it i've already judged you i've made a judgment i i think you're a pretty cool guy so uh -huh. if i have an opinion i've made a judgment yeah so everybody does it basically so yeah. everybody does so judgment is not negative, like you're a jerk, or oh, uh, or, or positive, like you're a wonderful person. Judgment is that you just simply have an opinion. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so um, we judge every day, every moment of every day. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah, not yeah. a big deal to judge. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like spirituality. Um, we talk about being spiritual. And usually when someone's talking about themselves being spiritual or referring to somebody being spiritual, they're saying, well, this person's evolved or this person is a good person or this person is a better person. Or, and that's usually the implication when, when you say, well, that person is spiritual. Well, being spiritual doesn't necessarily mean be, being good. Yeah, right. Yeah. There was this dude in California, um, and his name was Anton LaVey. Yeah, yeah. And he started the Satanic Church, and he wrote the Satanic Bible. And that guy worshipped the devil. He was also spiritual, but Super he's not the kind of Super intelligent guy, too. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. He's not the kind of guy, spiritual kind of guy I'd like to hang out with. But so, so being spiritual doesn't necessarily mean being good. Yeah. And, 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 and that's an important um, distinction, too. So when people come to you nowadays, yeah. yes, when they come to you to like a book a session, yep. do you still do the tea leaves? or No. I Oh, thank you for coming back to that. So I never could do tea leaf readings. Huh. I, I didn't. I, I, I could never. And I don't use a medium. So when I do a reading, and um, even when I was a kid at the tea room, I, I didn't really use the tea room. So when people come to me now, um, I just sit down. I have a, a, a way that I get into uh, doing the reading. Uh, I don't ask questions. And the readings I do are, are, are a monologue more so than a dialogue. And I start off and, and um, I start off and I tell the person what I'm going to do. And then I uh, start doing it. And at first what I do is I talk a little bit about the future. Um, and, and, and that is just so that I can, you know, connect with the person, uh, mm -hmm. get in touch with their energy and, um, and also tell them little things about the future, like a year from now, um, maybe unrelated to why they're coming to see me. But I do a little bit of that stuff because what I'm telling them is that they're going to be here this time next year, uh, although they may not know it consciously and that, and that whatever they're going through, they're going to already be through it. So then I'll come back and talk um, about the present. I go into the past. And at this stage where the, where I'm doing readings, I often see someone's life from um, conception to to their their completion. Really? And throughout their yeah, and and throughout the reading, I go back and forth in time and I talk about things and 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 and, and combine. and but mostly I talk about where where we're at right now. And that goes on for about an hour. So I do that, you know, one hour monologue. And then if they have any other questions, I answer them. So that's how I do it. That's how I've almost always done it. But um, I developed my psychic ability um, as, as a child, and I honed my psychic ability living on the streets. And I survived living on the street using my intuition, uh, my instincts. That, that's how I survived. And because um, the first time I was on the street, I was 14 because I ran away the first time, almost well, both times, actually. So so um, I survived by using my instincts 
Um, and in every situation I was ever in on the street, almost always I had the option of being able to use my psychic, my intuitive skills or ability or do something immoral or illegal. And just about all the, all the time when I was on the street, I, I, I chose to do the intuitive psychic um, uh, way out. Wait, there were so, wait, wait, wait. But let me, so you, you're saying you chose, sometimes you chose to do, you had the intuitive ability to do things immorally? I got confused there for a second. Oh, okay. So uh, there was always an option for me to use my intuitive or psychic abilities uh -huh. to survive. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Or a immoral or illegal act. Right. Steal, rob. Um, a child in the middle of January um, in a blizzard um, will do immoral acts to have something to eat. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, so fortunately, I almost always found ways to do, to sur survive using my intuition and instincts and my will, and my will to live, so, and my will to work. Interesting. All right, so you, uh, unlike in my situation where I'm trying to, like, analyze it and learn how to do it, you actually tapped into this through survival, right? It, so, it, well, that's that's what it was from the very beginning. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That was from the very beginning um, I survived that way. You know, like a kid running does not run away from an, um, a home and live in, a, in, in an alleyway uh, in the wintertime if, if, if it's, um, you know, the Brady Bunch family. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or, right. You know. So. So. You know. There's some stuff going on there. So there was a reason. And and after fifteen and a half, after the second time, I I never lived with at home with my family uh, full time ever again. So um, I survived by my psychic ability, intuition, and instincts. Mm -hmm. And I heard that if you did worked at the cozy tea room in Toronto. Uh, if you worked there in the afternoon doing tea leaf and card readings, you would get um, a cup of tea, a sandwich, cookies, uh, and you get paid at the end of the shift. Wow! And then if you work, yeah, big deal. And if you worked at the, if you worked in the evening shift, um, you you would get a hot meal. <laughs> wow, that was cool. Uh, cookies, tea. And you get paid as well. So um, I know the day really well. It was January 17th, and it was 1965. I, I went into the cozy tea room, and I phoned in advance, and I spoke to the owner, and I told her that I was a psychic. And she said, well, come down. And um, she saw that I was a kid, and I had to do a reading for her, and I had to do a tea leaf reading. I, I never did that. So I just simply picked the teacup up, and I held the teacup in front of me, in front of my face or my, my, in, in, my, in my hands, and I just looked at the teacup up, look back at her, and I talked as I'm speaking with you now. And yeah. uh, she hired me. That's and so that cool, day, man. That's so yeah, cool. That's how I got the job. So she hired me that day. And that day, you know, um, by the way, I worked both shifts. And so, like, I had a, um, a sandwich and a cup of tea and cookies, uh, had a hot meal and more cookies and more tea. And I had money that night. I had a place to sleep. And I had a job to go to the next day. All, all because you tapped into that ability. That's yeah, yeah. Well, it's what I did. Is it's, it's how I lived. Started as a child. Yeah, that's so, so cool. So, um, I worked at the tea room um, five days a week, mostly, um, and and um, sometimes six. And I worked there till I was about twenty-one. And by the time I was about, and, and, and some days I would see 30 people, maybe more. Um, some days I'd see 10. And, you know, by the time I was about 21 years old, I, I'd done thousands of readings. Man. So. Uh, it was, but, it's, but it's what I did, right? Well, okay, so I was a pretty wild kid, too. So I'd work at the tea room all day, and then I'd party all night and, you know, come back the next day. But, but, I, but, bet you, I bet you got dates, too, pretty easily, <laughs> just right? Okay. Uh, well, um, in my early days, um, well, yeah, it happened a lot. Yeah, I mean, because um, if you just start like, <laughs> that's, right. he's like, let me tell you something I know all about. And just start, you probably that didn't have any issues with that at all, did you? 
Well, you well, talking to people. when when I was when I was um, younger, I, I I didn't realize the impact of that, and as I got farther into my twenties, I realized that that I was using a talent um, th- that I have that I developed, and you know, like I earned it. Um, I was using that, and and it was unfair. Exactly. That's what I was. That's exactly why I asked you that question because I was thinking, yeah. you got and the advantage over everybody in the room. <laughs> you oh, know absolutely. what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's pretty unfair. Absolutely. Right. And and it was it was unfair. And um, so so at that point, I I stopped using um my I I you know, it, it's like, for me to turn off my psychic ability is like is like someone to t- close their eyes and walk around. Yeah. Um, so to do that, because it's just so part of me. Um, so what I had to do was ignore what I was sensing. And then and then what I I decided is um, stop going out with clients. Yeah, that probably would that probably be okay. a good thing, too. And, and, and that <laughs> and that, you know, that happened in my late 20s. Yeah. So about four years ago. Right. Because I'm I, I turned 72 um, in, in July this year in, in uh, 2021. So, um, I, I realized that uh, that was, um, a, um, a, an advantage and, and it, it, and I also felt that not only was it an advantage in, in, a, a, a moral way, I, I, I felt that it was using a skill, um, for my own personal benefit. Yeah, it feels kind of selfish, right? Because well, it is. Yeah, the whole kind of the, the whole dating thing or getting to know somebody is actually you take all the fun away of actually getting to know them and like you know over time. But so so, so yeah, I just had a random question thought about that. But so yeah. if I came to you and asked you for a reading, yeah. and we got to go yes. into the break here, so I just want to know this real quick, and we can talk about it when we come yeah. back. You you you're saying that. Like you said earlier, you would kind of know my story from birth to death in a, in a, in a kind of sense. Not as soon as I meet you. Um, it would take a little while. Like, wait, like I have a, um, you know, I have a process. What I do is I tell your story and I talk about where you're at, um, what's going on with you. And then and then um, I can often see your life from conception and I can see it to the end. And and there are reasons that I do and talk about it. There, there are reasons. And sometimes it's really important to see what was going on with somebody in the very formulative stages of their life. It's very important. And sometimes it's really important to let people know um, h- how long they're going to be around. Yeah. Yeah. That, I always I give think... it in an option, right? Yeah, I think. But uh, I don't. I'm, I don't yeah, know if I'd so want to know that, but maybe I will. Well, well, you know? well. Um, I I don't just say okay. Well, on you know, you're gonna die at. This By the time. way, <laughs> yeah. open ended. It's it's very open ended. Sure. Uh, I I uh, okay. So, um, and and I tend to yeah, it's very open ended, and, and and the real focus isn't isn't so much how how long you're going to be on um where i really focus on is where you're at right now what got you to where you are and where you're going to be going to in, in the next couple of years uh but but i do look at where you've been and and and, and where you're going to go Man, the other thing that i make an effort to do is make sure that i say things to people that they can be- in a way that they can believe it ah, so okay. By the way, are we going to a break yeah, now? Yeah, we got to go to a break now. This and come like, so okay. I want to get into a little bit more about right. how you do readings and stuff, but uh, okay. we're going to take our break. We'll be right back. Fascinating stuff, guys. Our guest tonight, uh, we'll open the phone lines up too, but Robert Lindsay Millen is here with us. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Northern California Piscean stuck in the Arizona desert. I'm a void walker and I got the shoes to prove it. 
So what do I do when my soul yearns to delve deep into the realm of the unknown? I aim my satellite straight into the night sky and catch a smooth ride on the KTLK DB radio waves. I tune into Lighting the Void with Joe Root on the French FM. Joe, Lighting the Void is the best show on the planet. This is Barney, your friend from Facebook. Thank you and all the crew for all you do. Namaste, my friend. This is Macon from the foothills of North Carolina, and I am a board walker. G'day, Boyd Walkers. This is Lily from Down Under Australia. The world may be small, but Enigma is great. So let your curiosity take you for a journey with Joe Root. Hey, this is V, coming in from Central Maryland, and I am a Void Walker. This is Kevin Darkerty, a beginner Void Walker. I'm from Vancouver, BC. I know a little about a lot, you know, as Leonard Skinner said, I guess the rest. I learned a lot from, uh, Mr. Root in the show. And I uh, heard it from the beginning. I knew right then he was going to be a New York Bell. Thanks for all your uh, shows and keep it up. Hey, this is Derek from Mass, a.k.a. the Night Stalker, and I'm a Void Walker. This is Mark from Chicago, and I walk the void to ascertain what is consciousness. My name is Jared Johnson, and I'm from Humboldt County, California. I do not know all the answers to the questions about reality. I do not claim to know the ultimate truth about life. I seek that which has been made hidden as a part of a family of explorers of consciousness. I'm a void walker. Thanks, Jaru. This is Barbara Charlton from Metaphorical Archaeology. If you've ever had a traumatic paranormal experience, the effects of it may stay with you for years. Who do you talk to? You can't go to conventional help. What we do is we use emotional freedom techniques or tapping to actually neutralize the effects of that event. Maybe when you tell the story now, your heart races and your palms get sweaty. You don't even want to think about it because you don't know how to neutralize that. That's what EFT tapping does it neutralizes those emotions the circuit that that was recorded on is gone the energy flows freely and you're free of it and that's what emotional freedom is all about we offer this as a pro bono service but this is something that i offer because no one it seems is helping people with these experiences if you'd like to reach me it's really easy my cell phone is 214-995-3754 please leave a message i will get back to you as quickly as possible or you you can email me barb.eft at gmail.com and EFT stands for emotional freedom techniques. Reach out to me. It's confidential. This works. You won't believe the results. Have you heard of heavy metals? Yeah! I'm not talking about the heavy metals in the junkyard. I'm talking about the heavy metals that build up in your body. Heavy metals in your body can make you feel sluggish, fatigued, and just plain off. Why not try Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com? Cleansing your body and making you feel great. Cleansing the inside of your body of intruders that sneak their way into you and set up an intruder camp. Life Change Tea helps remove unwanted intruder camps. Brew it, steep it, and drink in the results. Tastes great so you can create a new health habit. Our tea loves to help people just needs the chance to so order yours today by logging on to get the tea.com. that's get the tea.com. our life change super strength tea is waiting this could be a beautiful relationship take charge of your health Dodge! order at get the tea.com. that's get the tea.com. the fringe fm isn't just a radio station we also provide services for all your audio production needs if you're interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or live radio show and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-5631 for a consultation. 
Lighting the Void and the Esoteric Scholar present the Altar Box, crafted and designed for magicians by magicians. Now you can take your practice with you. This beautifully handcrafted mobile altar opens and works as an altar for any of your spiritual, religious, or ritual practices. Made to travel and work in small spaces, the Altar Box comes with hidden compartments for your practice tools and accessories. The Altar Box also comes with a dark scrying mirror for scrying and reverses and fits perfectly also as a chalkboard for any sigil, symbol, or whatever you see fit to sketch. The Altar Box is handcrafted to carry as a small suitcase, so you may take your practice with you, and the hinges are made with solid material and hinged with leather and rivets for extra strength. The mirror piece and floor plate fit perfectly when closed, so no movement will happen. Use it in small places as well. You can practice meditation, magic, planetary magic, sigil magic, scrying, ritual. Never be without your practice tools again, no matter the setting or where you go. In this season, give the gift of magic for yourself or your loved one by grabbing your altar box. Was two forty nine ninety nine now one ninety nine ninety nine. The sale ends January first, twenty twenty one. Just go to lightingthevoid.com forward slash altar box and get yours while the sale lasts. Welcome back to Lighting the Void. Thanks for joining us here. We're at the second hour of the broadcast. We'll go ahead and open the phone lines up. If you called during break, I missed you. I'm sorry. It's 1-800-588-0335. Our guest, Robert Lindsay Milne, is here with us. Renowned psychic. He's been on several radio shows. And uh, we're not doing psychic readings. Uh, he has to get prepared for them and... He does them in a very special way. But the topic tonight is how do we tap into this? And this guy has been doing this stuff since I, he was a kid. And, um, yeah, so it's one 800 if you want to call in. Big shout-out to Ronnie at Get the Tea right now. I know everybody's got their New Year resolutions. Hey, that's what you need to get. It'll help you out. you got to get cleansed before you start the weight loss stuff anyways. And, uh Ronnie's doing good stuff with what he's doing. He's always been there for us. And, um, you know, if you want to make sure you don't have a bunch of extra junk in there, that's the stuff to get. Go to getthetea.com and just look around. Tell me what you get, too, when you order it, because I want some feedback on that. And then make sure you put the Fringe FM in there, too, so we can uh, get the credit for that as well. That would really help support the station. Now, Robert, I mean, you've got a fascinating story. And before I start taking callers or anything, I wanted to kind of finish what we were talking about before the break. Sure. You know, I'd asked you, um, I'd asked you if, you know, like you would know as soon as you started talking to somebody, you would know about them kind of from conception to death now. When I'm, when I'm actually tuning in and doing a reading, that is usually what happens. Okay. And but I, you know, I've been doing it for so long, so much. It's, it's, it, it's just, Natural instinct is, is what I do. Right. So if you think that if you think that there's something pretty important that you need to say and you're not real sure that a person wants to know about, uh, well, maybe their time's coming up or whatever, you kind of delicately, I'm sure you well, know I how wouldn't to do, do that. It. Yeah. I, so. I, I, I wouldn't do that. Um, I, I give information to people and I give it to them to on the level that they're able to accept. Ah, okay. And oh, 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 okay, and and I when I do my readings, while I'm I'm clear as to what I'm saying, I often, most often, leave my um, statements um, open ended. So instead of saying you will um, do this, I'll, I'll say you. It appears as if you, you'll be doing this. You will have made that choice, by the way, or or I will describe it that way as opposed to absolutely it should be like this, unless it were like a major issue. Um, for example, um, I've been featured in a book. It was called The Perfect Predator, and it it's it's a real life story of of um, uh, a man that catches uh, uh, the the most powerful superbug on the planet. Um, and um, it's 100% antibiotic resistant, which means you die when you get it. And his wife, who's been a long-term client of mine, um, Stephanie Strathy, she is um, a renowned epidemiologist. 
And when her husband was dying, she decided that she was going to find a cure um, for that incurable disease. And um, her husband was in a coma dying. And by the way, he was in a coma, I think, for about eight months. And I had a psychic link with um, her husband. And I knew exactly what he was going through emotionally. I knew I knew um, when his vital signs had changed. I, I knew um, how he was feeling. I knew that if his spirit was strong, I knew when he was getting ready to let go. Um, and I... Um, worked with Stephanie, we had a Skype call every day for, for, for several months. Now, I'm not the star of the show because there were many, many, many other people involved finding the cure um, for this, this, this disease. And as Tom was, you know, like within hours of death, um, he was um, injected with um, the, the cure that his wife had, had, had come up with. Now, uh -huh. it was a worldwide collaboration. But had I not been doing my job, because it was when Tom, Tom was in a coma and he was getting ready uh, to let go and die, um, it was when I, I knew that and I knew what he needed. He needed to have his children near him. Um, and um, it was because of me that his children showed up. In the book, Tom writes about that part, um, being in the coma, being lost, getting, you know, does not where he is, not where he is, not understanding, letting go, feeling terribly alone, and um, all of a sudden his daughters arrive and he feels strong and comes back. And he writes about that without talking to me. Um, so... I had a psychic link with him as well as with 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 um, Stephanie as well. So I when I was doing that type of work, I was very, very direct and straightforward. I, I didn't pull punches, but that was a matter of life and death. Yeah, I understand. See, that's OK, cool. Then you answered that question perfectly. Then Let, let's go ahead and take this one phone caller here. We got it's a uh, 905 area code. You're on the air uh, with Robert Lindsay Mill. Who are we speaking with? This is uh, Kaz from Canada. Hello, hello, Joe and Mr. Millen. What's oh, what's... thank hi, hi. Where 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 are you in Canada? I'm in the uh, in Canada. I'm in the uh, waterfall capital of the world, Mr. Millen. In Niagara Falls. Nope. Well, please call me Robert. But but where what's the? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Right. What... Ha ha Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Oh, oh, okay. There. Oh, that's where you're from. Well, I'm from Toronto. Good, good to talk to you. What do you want? What do you want to ask? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know what? I have one question about uh, intuition, and then another quick question. I'll take my answer off the air if that's all right. Sure. Sure. Go. Cool. Okay. Far. So, uh, what are your? Uh, what would your guidance be uh, towards uh, souls that would like to develop and enhance? Uh, intuitive abilities that they may possess currently, uh, intuitive abilities that they may lie dormant in them, as well as uh, telekinetic and psychokinetic energies as well. Thank you very much oh. for taking my call. Yeah, thanks. Great for your question. question. Um, so I, I just have to. I, I, I when 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 he said that he was, you know, what would you advise a soul? Um, I, I'm assuming that that was just a slang term because. Um, our soul already knows how to do all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so I, so, so let's assume that he was just saying, you know, what's the soul to do in, in that kind of, um, statement because his soul already would have known. So he was asking, um, how to develop, um, these types of abilities, be that, um, intuition, be that the ability to, um, uh, move objects, be that, and and, and all those psychic uh, abilities. Well, um, everybody can do those things. And we all have that ability. And what we have to do, though, is learn that we can do them. And in order to be able to do something, you have to believe you can do it. So, um, for example, the only reason, Joe, you cannot fly is because you absolutely 100% believe you cannot. 
and 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 you know like don't don't try to prove yourself right or wrong on this one you know <laughs> right. like, yeah. you know so so our, now here's so now the only reason you can't walk through a wall is because you absolutely believe you can't so so when you believe you can do something then you can do it now believing and and wishing or hoping are different or wanting is different believing is knowing so when you believe something you can do it. So um, when you want to start doing things like that, and some people call them miracles, the way you do it is you start off doing little ones. Because miracles also are only miracles until you know how to do it. And then it's something different. So anybody and everybody can do and 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 by the way um while i was born christian i'm not a christian and i'm not a religious man i'm you know i'm, I'm more open-minded or i'm not in a specific religion um but but jesus said these things i have done and greater ye shall do so 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 you know this guy did some like pretty big uh miracles but but walking on water that's the gold medal round um he didn't start there um, he, he would have started off in other things, uh, smaller things, yeah. and you work your way up o over lifetimes. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so so you learn these, do it, the, you know, you do it, um, uh, you do them, the, the, the little things, until you get really good at that, and then um, then you believe you can do it. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you expand from there. So when I do also intuitive life coaching and, and, um, and, and what I also tell people is, is that don't set your goal to your highest standard, set your goal to the highest level of your belief that you can do, and then you will do it. And then you can set a higher standard again, set what you can do. And when I'm doing a reading for somebody, I will give them the information um, to the point that they will be able to believe that they could do it or could experience it so that they won't eliminate it from their mind. Because everything that I would say and everything any psychic would say is, is based on the client's free choice and free will, ex choosing to accept or reject that information. It's always free choice and free will. So then, <laughs> let me. So, yeah, so yeah. when it comes to... Yeah. This is a question I've always had to I always ask. When it comes to intuition okay. or yep. fear or paranoia, right? There there is a there is a difference. Like if you have to make a choice, uh, let's say you come to a fork in the road and you don't know which way to go. Your intuition's telling you to go one way, but if the mind interferes, then it can be something else. I wonder sometimes how to interpret the difference between my intuition and my actual mind fears or paranoia. If that makes Great sense. It certainly does. Um, so let me just think here. Um, when you're using your intuition, you will feel it in your body. Yeah, that makes um, total sense, actually. Okay. Yeah. When you're using your analytical mind, it will be in your head. It'll be, your, it'll be in your head, in your mind, and, and you'll feel it in your heart. Not your heart in that it feels, but, but the way it beats. That's how you can tell the difference. Yeah, like you can, and you can totally have a thought and then make your body feel something. But you're saying like your intuition, usually your body will, because that makes sense to me, because your body yes. will know something's off, right? Absolutely. Like immediately. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now um, you can overthink something. And that's another story. So so and that's when you're in your mind. You know, I've 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 been kind of it's kind of ironic because I've been pretty intuitive about this. When I tell people this all the time, like trust your body. As soon as yes. you get around something or ask a question, like before you even have a thought, what is your body telling you? That's usually what you need to trust. A hundred percent of the time, it seems that way. Absolutely. That's right. Um, and the reason for that, would you like to know the, 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 the psychological reason for that? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, so um, this instinct comes from our primal need to survive. 
and and where it comes from is in a, is in our lower brain and that instinct to 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 survive and and when we're in that life death situation that's the part of our brain that takes over and and uh, um, that, that's the part of our brain that 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 takes over there's no logical thought um it's all instinct right see yeah so let's say um you're around somebody that's telling you something like kind of like a stranger danger like my son actually had an incident like this when he was younger and i was really proud of him you know but uh he well i'll tell you about a time like i think kids are really intuitive too we were in hot springs village where i was or hot springs i was walking up and down the strip we went into the store and it was like this biker store or whatever and i'm looking at these vests and the second he gets he was only like nine or ten years old the second he gets around all this biker gear he starts freaking out. He's like, I don't want to be in here. I don't feel good. Yeah. Something's not right. And, I, and I'm like, what's, what's the matter? And, you know, I was trying to analyze what was going on, but he just kept looking at me, telling me, he's like, I just can't, I don't want to be around this stuff. So I got him out of there. And I always thought about that to this day. It's like, what was that? M must have been like a past life, something, something. Like he just didn't want to be around biker stuff at all. Right. So um, when that happens... He was in his primal state. His instincts were telling him something. He could not describe or identify what it was. All that he knew was that this felt bad and to get the hell away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So he, uh, how old was your boy when that happened? I think he was like he was about ten years old when that happened. Okay, so so his 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 brain certainly was still in in, in uh, the formulative stage, and and he 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 wasn't um, really fully evolved um, developed uh, in the analytical brain, the upper brain. Um, so so his primal instincts would be more powerful still at that time. Yeah. He wouldn't be able to tell you. So that is also sometimes, even for me, um, when I sometimes when I'm doing a reading for somebody, I don't know what I'm going to say next, but it comes out. I, I it, it 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 just comes out. Um, so so sometimes uh, I myself uh, could be. We had a terrible thing happen in um, I, I I think it was 2018. Um, some idiot, some, some scumbag um, decided he didn't like women and he rented a, uh, a van and, and drove down the sidewalk of the, our main, like the main street in Toronto, Young Street, uh -huh. and he drove down the sidewalk um, and he killed 10 women. Oh my um, God. I, I'm just trying to, um, I'm just trying to remember why, why I was talking about that primal thing. Okay, yes, here. So I'm, I just happened to, who had been in that neighborhood about 20 minutes before that happened. And I was across the road, I was getting gas, and I got in my car, and then all of a sudden I said, uh, I was gonna go to another place in the, in, the, in the area, and for some reason, I just chose not to do it. And then like 45 minutes later, I right hear, um, th this is what had happened where I had just been. Um, my instincts often just lead me uh, away. I, I, if I, it, when I feel it, I, I, well, I've lived my life that way. Yeah. I think a lot of people, I mean, I think a lot of people should live that way. Yeah. I even remember when I was a teenager and, uh, well, I was going to this place, uh, that we went back to, I thought a, a friend of mine should apologize to this guy because he said something about the guy's child. And the second we walk into the yard, right, I got this yep. crazy, crazy feeling in my gut. So it was a mixture yep. of deja vu and a weird yep. twist in my gut. And I said, look, man, something yep. bad's going to happen. We need Honor to just it. leave. We need to leave. Absolutely. And no Honor one will listen to me. They're like, oh, you're always paranoid thinking something bad's going to happen. Like Calling yeah. me a negative person or whatever, right? Yeah. I said, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's yeah. see how this goes down. When we go into the house and he is then before he can even apologize, a fight breaks out. And we um we were trapped in this person's house. Imagine that. With Whoa. his whole family there and they're thinking we're the devil. 
right? Yeah. So we were lucky we got out of there before. alive, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, what I'm wow. saying is, is I don't know if because of the situation, sometimes I wondered that it registered like common sense and it hit my gut, or it was just my gut saying, hey, you know, like this isn't good because it felt instantaneous is what I'm saying. It was your inner self, your intuition, your psychic ability. Someone else can say it was your angels or your guides. Um, whatever it was, it was coming through you and saved your ass. Yeah, for sure. Or yeah. it will save your ass if you listen to it. Um, it's when you start to analyze it is when you get all messed up. So then how do you, okay, so let's say you start tapping into this stuff. Like uh -huh. you just naturally well, did, did it and you, you do it all the uh -huh. time. Still right? do. Yeah. Other people and by start... the way, by the way, um, when, when I was around 21 years old, um, just after I left the tea room, I, I knew then, well, there's several times and, 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 and I made a personal vow that I would do a psychic reading or practice being psychic every day of my life. I managed to do that for about 30 years before missing a day of practice or doing a reading. Um, so, um, that, that's how much uh, important being psychic is to me. Yeah, I, I believe that. And and then when let's say you you meet a family member, talk to a family member, pass somebody on the street, do you get like these? Do you ever get like these notions where I have to tell this person this thing because I just got? I this. would very seldom ever do such a thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and um, it, it's it's interesting. I don't just. Um, I would very seldom ever do that. Um, and and I would very seldom ever ask somebody if they would want to have a reading or, or, or sell that. Um, if somebody wants to have a reading from me, they have to contact me personally and talk to me and to ask me if, they, if I would do a reading for them. I, I, I don't reach out, by the way. Uh, yeah. So, you, you well, you probably, you, at this point, you probably don't have to. I mean. Um, but, but I never have. So what does it I've, take I've is it, when it comes to feeling somebody's energy? Is it like a phone call or do you need to have to look at them? What is the one thing for you that really that happens where you can really pick up on somebody's energy? I think it's different for everybody, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, everybody has a different way of identifying things and everybody has a different point of view. Literally, everybody has a different perspective and everybody's point of view is correct. Um, so um, in, in their eyes and, and, and anyway, um, so when I teach people, I, I used to teach a, uh, a seminar, a one day seminar on how to be psychic. And, um, and I taught it for about 20 years and, and the biggest group I had was a little over 300 and the smallest was 10 and everywhere in between. And in that group, and, and to anybody could come in, well, you had to have the money to get into, you know, pay for the, yeah, the, the, sure. the class, right? But if you had that and you had an open mind, isn't that? So I guaranteed to anyone that would sit in my class that they would do psychic readings for strangers in that room. And if they didn't, they'd get their money back. And now the other condition was they had to do the exercises that I asked would teach them to do. And within about two hours, I would have the whole class, you know, people face to face, like face, you know, in, in group, uh, sorry, in, in, in couples, uh, face to face, uh, that they didn't know each other and, and, and they would be doing psychic readings for each other. And it, it in, in, the, in all the years I taught, there were only two times that, that, um, I had to give the money back. Uh, once the woman just hated my guts personally, um, and I'm, I can't remember what the other one was. Maybe, you know, I didn't, whatever. Anyway, she and I and I um, and, and she got her money back. But that was the that was the only two times. And and what I would do, first of all, is I would start the class and I would get everyone to tell me what they think being psychic is. And they would, you know, and I would ask them to, you know, what are the words? Um, and, and you would write them down on, 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 on the, on the board, you, you know, clairvoyance, clairsentient and, and, and all these things. And, and then I would 
point out to people it's very difficult to do any of this stuff when you're thinking about maybe I'm more clairsentient than I am clairvoyant or maybe I'm being telepathic when I really want to be uh, and, and, and you start playing with all that stuff what happens is you miss it all so what I tell people and show people is become aware of what's obvious well, yeah that's look, a look at the person, look at them and see them, see them all over. Like, like, don't like, you know, like stare them down or, you know, like, like, that. but, but, but become aware of them and see, you know, like, see what they're wearing. Um, see how they sit, look at their face. Um, what do they look like? What do they feel like? Um, when you become aware of what's obvious, then more becomes obvious. And then when you become aware of what's more obvious, then more becomes obvious to you again. And eventually, when you are becoming aware of what's obvious, what's obvious to you is not obvious to others. So an example of that, think of a house painter and then think of a, um, you know, a do-it-yourselfer painter. So a do-it-yourself painter, you know, he paints the room, right? And he looks around and say, wow, what a great job. You know, because he just, or, or people come in and say, boy, that's a really great job you did. Uh, love, and what they're saying is to love your color. And then like, like a professional walks in and goes, who, who did that mess? And it takes the guy like, you know, three seconds to see all the mistakes. And the reason is because he's the professional and it's obvious. Yeah, that, well, see, that's another question I was going to ask you. Here's the thing. We're beyond this yes. now for sure, but there still are people out there who take, they want to take a moral high ground and they say, well, uh, I'm just, I know it's a silly question, but I still am curious about your answer. What kind well, it's a spiritual thing that you're doing, which you've already talked about that. It could be different, right? Why would you charge money for it? I believe uh, I, I believe you should actually if, if you should use the gifts that you're given and oh. make a living with them. But I'm just curious okay, as so to what you're saying. Are you saying, are you people... saying that? Are, are, so the question is: um, There are some people that think that um, doing psychic work or doing spiritual work. I don't know if I'm doing spiritual work, and I don't know if I'm that spiritual right, person. Right, I get it. Um, yeah. Okay, but but or or to use a psychic gift. Oh, oh, to use a God-given talent to make money at right. Yeah, exactly. That, okay, they think it's right. some people okay, think so, it's immoral or something. Yeah, well, who's who? Um, so what? What does Tom Brady have? Yeah, right. The ability to win. Yeah, that's what he's got. A God-given <laughs> yeah. talent to throw the bloody football. Yeah. Well, sure. that, a God-given talent. He shouldn't get paid for it. Yeah. In fact, okay. I, I, I would kind of. I would kind of argue in certain situations that a psychic ability would be a little bit more. Uh, worth paying than throwing the football, but we live in a different kind of society right now. So football is pretty cool, and I dig that too. Yeah. But I get what you're so, saying. Yeah, like he so, was born with a gift of athleticism, or 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 music, right, right, um, or or gardening. And I'm just playing the devil's advocate here because well, well yeah, I, I know. Like, I, of I get so many people that I talk to that you know they, they want to start their own businesses, doing art or writing, or and I don't know if I should charge money for it. And I'm like, are you kidding? If like, if it's I, I what, have a, do I it. Have a story about I, I I have a story about that um, being interviewed um, by um, a reporter, um, and and um, she went down that path about um, how much you're you making, and you um, I, I I could share that with you. And this happened in the late 1970s, and it actually happened in Vancouver, um, and I was being interviewed, and at the time. Uh, a newspaper there was called the Vancouver Sun. It's not related to the Sun, um, um, a news chain uh, from the east. Okay. So anyway, it was called it was called the Vancouver Sun, and um, the reporter um, was a um, an extremely masculine looking woman, um, and it was difficult at first glance. Um, to think that she was C certainly way the way she would you know she, the way she was dressed sure, yeah. um, her hair um, her mannerisms were, were were very masculine like um, she was tough and hard nosed 
And um, I, I was only like 24 or 25 or something like this. And and um, in those days, I I was charging. I, I really was charging an exorbitant amount of money. It was like eighty dollars for a half an hour, and it was really a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and and she. But but at the time, I was the only psychic that was appearing on radio shows and TV shows, and I was traveling around with a full time secretary doing appointments for people. Um, so so um, there was a big demand, um, and and I charged what I could get at that time. So we got around to how much you do you charge? And I told her, you know, she said, like, how long are your readings? And in those days, they were a half an hour. But I had a whole lot more energy, and I talked a lot faster then. So um, I, I, I said, oh, they're, um, they're, they're 30 minutes long. And she said, how much do you charge? And I said, uh, $80. And she said, $80? You charge $80? Oh, she got outraged. You charge $80 for a half an hour? How, how, how come you charge $80? <laughs> in how come you charge $80 yeah. for a half an hour? And I said, because I can't get 100 <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, people wouldn't pay 100 bucks, so I went down to 20 It seems to work <laughs> out. <laughs> she went ballistic. But then what happened is she said, Oh, you're going to lose your gift. Oh, yeah. You deserve and to then lose. She it, said, right? Yeah. But but then she said, and what are you going to do when you lose your gift? And and I got really serious. And, and I said to her, well, if first of all, I will never lose my gift. But if I did, there would be no purpose for me to live my life. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that was my I don't, answer. I, I don't see the, the problem. Here's the thing when it comes to money is money, people pay. We have to have a different mindset about money, number one. Uh, we were, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, at least I am. We were raised to be like, you got to really work really hard and make a little bit of money and bust yeah. your butt. To That is the program that keeps you from having the life that you're here to have, right? All you have to do to, to get money is provide value. When people will mm -hmm. happily give it to you if they get the value they want. That's it. It's a video game, folks. That's the way I look at it. You know? Yeah, um, that, that's right. Um, so I I practice. I've practiced all my life. Um, I I'm always doing readings. All now um, now that I'm getting older, like about. Uh, eight nine years ago, I, I got to a point where I started hating um, doing in doing phone in shows, which which was I, I had done a major part of my career. Yeah, and and I got to the point where I I hated it. Um, yeah. doing readings on the telephone on the radio, I just absolutely just hated it. Um, and 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 I I stopped. Um, and you know I was in my late sixties. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, sixties. Um, no, I was, yeah, I was in my mid sixties and, um, I just thought, okay, well, that's just a part of my work. So I decided to slow down in terms of my work. So since that time, I've only been doing five or 600 readings a year. That's still a and, lot. Jeez. Though. Yeah. Well, from, well, that's slowing down for me. So I, I, do, I still do that. And, and, and since I, I've come out of, uh, um, my, uh, you know, um, radio and TV, um, um, uh, retirement, I, I've just started doing shows again. Um, uh, now, now I, I, I'm starting to do a whole lot more readings. Yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. I bet you are. And then, because I decided, you know, like I, I, I decided I wanted to though. Now, now Michelle, is it Michelle it, encouraged me? Michelle, okay. You know who the the um you, you know who Michelle is, the the publicist. Yeah, right. Right, yes. right. She she encouraged me to st start doing shows. Yeah, and she's really cool okay. too. I actually I yeah. really like her. Uh, yeah. but here's the thing. So I want to know so like let's say have you ever taken a vacation from this? Like just say, you know, yes. I'm going to take two weeks. I'm not going to read nothing, no, nobody, no matter what, I've, nothing, right? Um, well, yes, I have, um, but but it was it it wasn't until it wasn't until I was actually in my um, mid forties 
b- before I took off. Um, I've I've never gone to, I've never gone that long with, without doing a reading. I, I've never gone that. The reason I've never why I ask is a, as I wonder I've, if, I've never like, done. if it's like a golf swing, right? Like if you stop doing yeah. it, you lose it. Maybe. Um, I've 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 never gone that long. Okay. All right. Um, two weeks. It. I've. I've. Now, even if I didn't like meet somebody and do it, do a reading for them, I. I. I go through um, um, a, a psychic kind of meditation at e- every day anyway. But sometimes, if you know, if I have the choice of doing a reading or practicing, you know, and if someone just happens to call me at the right time and I'm thinking, gee, I'd rather, I'd rather, I, I'd rather do a reading rather than practice. And if they call me at the right time, I'd say, okay, can you be here in an hour? Yeah, okay, come on over, and 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 that would be my practice. So really so, cool. yeah. Um and and um now that doesn't mean I go around doing readings all the time. Right. This is turned on, turned off. This is a controlled thing. You know, I turn, uh, uh, this is, you know, an expression, you know, I turn on the crystal ball. I don't, I turn on the crystal ball and, and, and then I do, I, you know, I use it, turn it off and then I'm done. And then, and then I'm thinking about, you know, the football game or the hockey game or a date or, you know, you know, how are my dogs doing? Something. I've found with, um, like I said, I've told you uh, during the break, I did like 600 and something shows. I've talked to quite a few psychics. Something that I've found with people that are really good psychics is, are, are like you and Mary. Like it, I can tell from the jump that, you know how like when people speak, a lot of times they analyze everything they're going to say and then they say it. You just yeah. kind of feel through it. <laughs> I just you? let it go. That's, that's how, how I am too, like, though. You feel through yeah. it, bam. And the, I think yeah. people like that, make i'm not saying they're better at being psychic because i think we all are i just think they have less blocks they have less things in the way blocking them from tapping into it i don't know what do you think well i yes um now the other thing that i've done besides doing like you know like like thousands and thousands of readings when when i was around 16 i i started going to therapy on myself, right? I was I started going to therapy. It's not a bad and idea. And since that time until now, there's never been a period in my life where I wasn't doing some type of therapy, some type of healing, some type evolving. I've always been doing it. I, I've never stopped. Interesting. Yes, it's not a bad I, idea, actually. Right. Um I'm a big fan well, of Israel few... Regardi, who wrote a lot of books about magic and, and the occult and stuff, and he swore up and down that it was paramount that you went to a therapist that you Absolutely. always spoke to a therapist um Absolutely. because you could get megalomania and he said all this other kind of stuff would happen if you didn't you, you had to be careful because the mind is a powerful thing right um i i also came from a horribly abusive background and sure. where yeah. where where i was um physically um, beaten and, and, um, humiliated and, and, um, a lot of other things. Um, so there were a lot of things to heal. Right. And, and, um, I, I felt that I had to do that stuff if I was going to be working with people on a, on on a deep, intimate level. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of, uh, intimate levels, I wanted to, if you could, since we only got maybe like 10 minutes here left in the, the broadcast, you got the story about your dad when you went to the hockey game. Oh, was this like yeah. the first time that you really did something open in front of your father? Or can you tell no, that story? No, no. Well, let me tell you. Okay, so so this happened when I was about nine years old, and this was this was one of the most paramount um, moments of my life. Um, it, it, it was um, March, and let me. It was about like 1958. Uh, it was the Stanley Cup hockey game semifinals, Boston and Toronto. Um, I'm, you know, we were Toronto Maple Leaf fans. So um, my dad had tickets to um, one, one of the games and um, the, the, the series was tied, I think, 1-1. And they were, this was the third um, game of the series in Toronto. And um, the game um, at the end of the third period, the game was, was tied 1-1. And when the teams came on the ice for the first overtime period, so like I, I was nine, uh, when they come on the ice for the first overtime period, I was immediately attracted to number 17 uh, with Toronto and his name was Gary Eman. 
and I knew he was going to score. I, wow. I knew it. Um, and the game hadn't even started. And and um, I started getting excited, but, you know, I got hit so many times for saying stuff, I, 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 I kind of kept my mouth shut. So when the game when it was time for the game to start, you know, the, you know, the other guys, the teams went to the bench and, you know, the starting lineup were there in Maple Leaf Gardens. There's like 20,000 people. The lights go down dark and the bright lights on the, on the ice. Everything's silent. The referee is just about to drop the puck and the power that I and by the way, Eamon was not on the ice, but the power that I was feeling that Eamon was going to score, it became that he did score. And just as the referee dropped the puck, I jumped up and started screaming, yay, cheering. And the entire building was silent. <laughs> and, and, and my <laughs> That's awesome. so so and and like twenty thousand people turned and looked at me and my dad. <laughs> and 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 my dad just put his hand on my shoulder and he said, sit down. <laughs> and, and I did. Um, referee drops the puck. The game starts, you know, two, three minutes later, uh, Gary Eamon jumps over the boards. Red Kelly uh, passes the puck to him and Eamon tips the puck into the net and Maple Leaf Gardens explodes. Uh, and everybody jumps up yelling and cheering. So um, between the time the referee dropped the puck and Eamon got on the ice, I was looking around and I was thinking, nobody knows. Yeah, right. Nobody I knows that you around. just saw that happen before it happened. Yeah, kind of thing. nobody, yeah. nobody knows that Eamon's going to score. Not even, e not even Eamon. And I went, oh, other people think different. And then Eamon scored. The building just erupted, and then the whole building, everyone yeah, was cheering, yeah. yelling, screaming, how, how lights going off. Nine. Nine. That's right. And that's when I knew. Do you, do um, you think what I was doing? Do you think there's a possibility, just a possibility, yes. that you create created that in some in some form or fashion? You, well, I'd like to be that powerful. I sure. Well, I, I you want to say that? I'll take it. Well, here's I don't the think thing. So. Like I think, yeah, you know, because of the double slit experiment. Teasing. I think sometimes yeah. we we co-create. Yeah. When I was nine years old, I was visiting my mother. And I remember we were driving to North Carolina because she used to come and pick me up. And she had one of those old station wagons, you know, those old station wagons. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're all laying down in the back of it. And I'm holding on to my, I got two half sisters and we're all just kind of snuggled up back there. And I, I can hear them arguing in the front seat. And uh, my stepdad gasses it. Now he's just gassing it. And I don't think anything, but there's something just came over me like we're going to wreck. Right. Like I knew yeah. we were going to wreck and I held on to them. And sure enough, like 10, 15 seconds after I just knew that we were going to wreck. It's not, you know, how some people say, oh, we're going to get in a wreck. It wasn't like that, man. Like I knew it was going to happen. Like I felt it like we're going to wreck. And then 15, yeah. maybe 30 seconds after, I don't know what we hit to this day. Still don't know because I pretended I was asleep after it happened. But sure enough, bam, we hit somebody and we're spinning in the road. And I always felt like to this day that I might have like had something to do with it or caused it. But maybe I was like that, like a kid to just kind of uh, tap into it. Well, um, the, the OK, so there's a lot of things psychologically that we could go into. But but what here, 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 here's here's what happened. No, let me tell you what didn't happen. Uh, you didn't make it happen. What you did do, though, was you identified something that could happen or you believed it would happen and you protected your sisters from getting injured. Yeah. That That's just, what you did. So but it was a different of kind of thing, man. It wasn't like, I'm telling you, like, like it wasn't, I don't know if it was like what you're talking about, but I it's do. exactly what I, it's exactly what I felt. Yeah. It's like I knew exactly. it was going to happen. The only difference is 20,000 people cheered. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Okay. you know so but but do we that, lose that was this? when i knew what i was going to do huh do we lose this then like we have this as children and then something happens right like we lose these abilities as well we we get taught to ignore it yeah we we we, we get taught to um develop our analytical brain um we we get taught to hold things and in, in and um hold back um that, that's what but but um we we always can get back in touch with it 
It's, it's just, it's just, you know, it's it's just simply um, getting back in touch with yourself. And the more aware someone becomes, the more in tune, the more intuitive they become. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's just part of being a human. Yeah, it's more like then the more you take the doubt away too. I think. I, Absolutely. I wonder sometimes why you just don't. I bet people are asking this question too. Like, why don't you just like go, why can't you do the lottery thing or like go bet on baseball games and stuff like that? You know, like, um, well, I have, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel immoral. I didn't, I did. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't win the lottery, but, but okay. So, um, there was this one time just, just after I left the tea room, I, I was living at this flea bag hotel. It was called Larry's hideaway. Um, I was always behind in my rent and, um, there was a guy, an old guy that was working on the front desk and, and, and he was working four nights a week. And, you know, one time the guy died, his name was Whitey. Um, so the next morning I went to the owner of the hotel and I said, you, you know, I'm sorry about Whitey, but would you consider that I to take Whitey? job but i'll work um in exchange for room and board and and um the the owner said yeah great you, you can do that so so i started to work at, at 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 this hotel in exchange for room and board and i'm trying to remember why i i um um went, went down that path um, well i was asking you just, about if you bet on baseball games or okay things so, like lottery so or whatever. in those days everybody knew that i was that i was a psychic that i did readings and and that's what they often call they that was my nickname psychic so um i was working the night shift at at this hotel and um there was um you know three four hours and late late more or late early morning that that place would be empty or quiet and, and I'd have time and people would come and talk to me. And this one night a guy came in and, and, um, you know, I'd seen him around and, and, and he said, um, uh, and gave me a piece of paper and, and there were cities, uh, New York, Detroit, uh, Boston, uh, sure. Louisiana. Right. And, 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 you know, and, and he said, okay, what, what, what cities do you like? So I just looked at him. I clicked off the, the you know, the cities and I uh, came in the next night and, and he gave me another paper and we did that. We did that every day for, you know, a couple of weeks. And then one night the guy came in. So this would have been, again, it would have been like 1973, 74, uh, something like that. Um, so, um, and, and the guy gave me like a hundred bucks. Like, like that's, that's like major league money now. He had you picking teams, didn't he? That's what he was yeah. doing. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I didn't ask him. I just kept doing it for a while. And every couple of weeks, he'd, you know, he'd give me that money. And then finally, I asked him what I was doing. And he said, oh, you're picking basketball teams. Oh, man. So and I, I said, been like, how much money oh, did you no. make, man? <laughs> That's what oh, I'd I asked. don't know. But then what happened was I started getting into because I didn't know anything about basketball. Well, then I started getting interested in basketball. And then I started doing it so that I could win. And mm. guess what? All the money that I had made for that guy over a period of time was lost. What? Really? Yeah. Um, because I was using my specific skill in a way um, that it wasn't meant to be used. Didn't this, didn't, I think something like that happened to Edgar Casey too, because people were asking him to pick stock prices and all kinds of stuff yeah. once. Yeah. And and like oh God, I didn't just do it once, you know. I <laughs> I've I've done several things like that. And at the beginning, you know, everybody makes a ton, and and inevitably, what happens is it all gets lost. As soon as I become personally involved, as soon as as soon as I have a stake in it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, because you see, um, I, I think a lot of really good psychics. I, I, th I think most good psychics, um, I, I, I think we're wired a little differently. Um, my instinct, and, and I think others have it, my, my instinct is not what I can get, but what can I do? So that's my first instinct. What can I do before what can I get? Now, that can work pretty badly in my side because because you, you I can lose a lot. But but that's not my first reaction. My first reaction is what can I do? Well, uh, since we only have like a minute left here, can yes. you uh, tell everybody because uh, the, the topic of the show is how do we 
how do we tap into this? If there's one piece of advice you can give everybody, Robert, how to tap become, into their psychic ability. Become aware of what's obvious. Make it clear. Practice doing that. Look, see, use all of your senses. By the way, if you have me back again, if, you know, if I think I, I'm good enough, um, we can do a, a whole show or a half a show where I'll take callers and we'll just go like crazy. And and we'll do like, you know, three minute calls and we'll just do one right after the other. We, I can do that. Yeah, we might. We might do that for sure. It sounds like fun. If you would although, like. although I had a really good time talking to you and like, uh, you know, Thank picking you. your brain on this stuff, man, okay. because well, I want everybody to do. I really want everybody to develop these conscious skills. I think that's going to be how we kind of change things in the future, not keep trying to keep do the same stuff that we've always been doing. We got to tap into this metaphysical stuff, man. Yes. Yes. Well, remember when I started, it was against the law. Yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> just a two years ago. Listen. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, listen, thanks for coming Thank on the broadcast. You. And you guys want to visit the website. It's rlmreadsyou.com. And, and uh, you can you plug your social media, too. What are your social media links? I'm, yeah. I'm on um, Facebook right now. Um, very shortly, a new website's going to be I'm going to be launched, and I'll be doing other me social media, too. Um, and uh, well, Facebook's the biggest one right now. Fantastic. Well, thank you again for coming on the broadcast. It was good having okay. you on the, on the show. And uh, I had fun. Yeah, I did too. And you guys, we'll probably have him back. I can tell you guys in the chat room are saying, yes, bring him back, bring him back. So we'll have him back. And also all the show notes will be in the archives. We're going to be back tomorrow night on the broadcast. We're going to be talking about uh, float tanks and states of consciousness, sensory deprivation uh, with Sean McCormick. And that's going to be an interesting broadcast. Make sure you come out tomorrow night for the live broadcast same time same channel we'll see you guys tomorrow night up next to secret teachings with ryan gable good night <laughs>